Hey everybody, it's Derek, and I am here with a video about enhancing your visionary experiences during meditation and even in your dream world. Uh, these are going to be three tips that seem to work for me when I first wanted to enhance my own abilities, and I find that they work very well. So combining these different tools and techniques, as well as the ones that seem to work for you, might assist you in enhancing your own clairvoyant abilities. So the first tip that I would say is watch the light in the room. Make sure that it's dark enough so that you can be able to have the visionary experience. Now, this isn't just um, a mind's eye flash, and yes, those visions can come too, where it's just a picture in the mind. But I'm talking about when transmissions of light are being given and you're having a visionary experience within your meditation, okay? So if the room is darker, and the space is darker, it's gonna create more of a clear slate, unobstructed by outside sources of light. So like that light, for example, I would close the blinds and I do close them every time so that they don't um, obstruct my visions. Um, but I also make sure that I am dark around here. So what I do use, and I put it somewhere, where did I put it, oh, it's right here. Um, what I started to use when I first began and I wanted to make sure that I was enhancing my abilities was this, Mindful Magazine. I actually heard about this from another um, psychic intuitive uh, and she uh, just suggested it and so I got it and it's amazing because it has these eye holes in it and you can open your eyes. Now, you can keep your eyes closed because it's going to help block out all the light and this plastic little bitty um, will block the light from coming through so it won't actually obstruct the, vis the visions. Um, but also, you can open your eyes during your meditation or just simply sitting there in darkness and you can develop your psychic abilities because what happens is you close your, I mean, you open your eyes in the dark and your eyes have to adapt to the darkness. So they're going to start to see things um, and develop other uh, abilities to be able to see in darkness and to see the unseen, if you will. Now, for some people, that might be a little scary to just sit there in the dark of their room and keep their eyes open and not knowing what's going to come. However, with this, I find a sense of comfort. So you can be able to use this, keep your eyes open, and allow your third eye to really start to do the work. Your third eye begins to activate a little bit more and it allows you to see the unseen frequencies that you aren't seeing by being so attached to the physical world. So I highly recommend this. Um, the other thing I wanna recommend um, is that sometimes a third eye stickiness can develop, meaning there's tension or discomfort or energy that feels like it's stuck, right? And many, uh, many people get this. And what happens is there's a lot of information and psychic information that's coming through the chakra system and the aura and when it's going through the third eye, it wants to powerfully come through so hard that it's not actually being distributed through the other chakras. Now, your other chakras are just as important for receiving psychic information, um, and they pertain to different areas of the body or non-physicality. So as we're receiving information from our aura, our chakras are picking that up, translating it into the information. But what tends to happen, especially with me, is my third eye will wanna do all of the work. So it begins to be so sticky and uncomfortable, especially when I'm doing channeling work. It comes through and I end up tapping. So a thing that you can get to move the energy through your third eye is by tapping it. Now I tap it here to get the energy kind of activated and then I, I go like this in a clockwise form so I can be able to kind of swirl the energy and I pull out any stagnancies or energies that might be blocking it. Then what I do is I ask to redistribute that energy to the other chakras. So I take that and I redistribute it sometimes physically and I pull it down. I ask my angels and guides, can you please um, move the energy into the other chakras to redistribute and make sure that it's all balanced. And then I visualize it taking place and that usually brings me down to a nice balanced state where I can actually not be so distracted by such energy coming through my third eye chakra. Okay, so this is a really high, good tool. Being in darkness, that's your first main tip, um, is being in darkness. And this is called Mindfold, so you can look it up. Just get it on Amazon or wherever. 
Um, but I highly recommend this. And especially when you want to kind of tune up your third eye, I would definitely pull this out. So I'm actually planning to use this today and that's kind of why the, um, the tip came forward. So darkness, make sure that you're in a dark enough space to be able to receive visions. Light can obstruct light. Too much light can also create a little bit of stagnancy in that third eye. Okay. So the second tip I want to say is to clear all of the chakras. We just kind of touched on the third eye chakra and redistributing the energy through the different chakra systems, but it's important that we prepare all of our chakras to receive psychic information. Um, so what I would highly recommend is doing a chakra clearing meditation or a balancing meditation, um, either before you're going to have uh, your vision or your experience that you're trying to embark on. Um, but doing it at least weekly to clear the chakras is a really good idea to keep yourself not only balanced, but it's going to keep all of your channels clear. Again, psychic information is coming through your chakras, right? It's coming through your auric field. So it's picking up the information energetically and then it brings it through and translates it. That's how it works. So you want to make sure that those translators are, or those receivers of information, I should say, because they're the receivers of the information, they need to be clear. And if they're not clear and they're muddied up by different experiences or stagnancies or things like that, then they're going to filter the information um, not as clear. So I would highly recommend doing a chakra clearing meditation. Now, you don't even have to do a big one. What I tend to do before um, a meditation or channeling, just to make sure my channel is clear, because this is a pillar of light that you want nice and strong, right? So what I would do is I would not only bring white light in through my body to clear out any lower frequencies or stagnancies, but I would fill each chakra red, orange, yellow, green, light blue, indigo, so on and so forth. White or violet, whatever. You, I do gold, white, and violet for the crown chakra. So what I would recommend is that you bring light into each one. Clear it right before you go into your meditation. If you can clear that, you're, you're like charging up your batteries. You're charging up that pillar of light to receive information so much more clearly. So I highly recommend it. Um, and even when we do channeling work and when I'm with my group, we will tend to, a lot of the times, not all of the time, um, light up the chakras and clear the chakras, activate the chakras. <laughs> that way you're able to receive that information. So I highly, highly recommend that. Along with the chakras, you can use crystals. So you can be, you can do that if you wanna lay down, you wanna hold crystals, it's up to you. But what I would do to activate that third eye to make sure it's receiving that information, that, that those visions, those psych, that psychic information, is using a clear quartz crystal. You can see one that I bought over there, it's from my new house. And, um, or ones like this, amethyst, so the purple, I guess it's not too dark, but the amethyst ones will work. And then also dark blue and indigo. That was a gift. Um, but that, that lapis will also work for the third eye because it increases our intuition. It increases our ability. So not only do the crystals and the stones work um, on our chakra systems and on our energetic body, our physical body, but they also, the color is also doing work because color carries a frequency, okay? So that frequency of the color is also doing the work for on us and for us, okay? So I'd highly recommend using crystals and using the higher chakra crystals, the light blue, the indigo, the purple, the dark blue, the, the clear crystal quartz will amplify your experience. So definitely a clear crystal quartz, maybe around the crown, is gonna be a really good idea. And then the final tip that I wanna give you um, to enhance your clairvoyant abilities here is to practice with um, memorizing cards. So if I were to pick a card, let's say this one. This is one I pulled for today. I pull dragon cards every day. So this one. So if I were to use this card, I would memorize, I would stare at it for a few minutes and I would memorize every detail of it. So think about it. What can you memorize about this card? Don't look at the words, just look at the picture. Memorize the details. Now you can overall get that picture in your mind, but what I want you to do is focus on the details. Focus on the little trees here, how that one is to a higher spike. Focus on the moon, the crescent is just showing, the rest is black. He's brown and green. 
he's stepping on all this. There's a body of water here. There's one tree there. Okay. So focus on that. Okay. Now what I want you to do now that you've done that, it's a little bit quick, but now that you've done that, okay. Now I want you to close your eyes and I want you to imagine every piece of that card that you can possibly remember. Just remember every little detail. Just close your eyes and remember every detail. Can you remember where the, that one tree was? Can you remember where the higher spike was? What did the moon look like? What were the colors? What did that river look like? Okay, so when you do that, what you're doing is you're tuning in without having to see the picture in front of you. You're actually tuning up your third eye capabilities without physically seeing. So it's allowing you to see that picture in your head. It does make an imprint, but how do we strengthen a muscle? We practice, right? So when you do that, and even though you saw it, it imprints, but it's just a, an imprint. You take that away and then you visualize it. You are now solidifying that information. So that's going to help you with enhancing your psychic abilities. Now, if you're already psychic, now you're already seeing visions, you're already having that experience. This is a great tune-up tool. So is the Mindfold Mask, a great tune-up tool that will allow you to uh, make sure that everything is working. You know, we're, it's a, still a vehicle. We still have to get it into the shop and work on ourselves. It's not all the one fit, quick fix, all right? So I hope those tips really help you um, develop better visionary experiences. They really do help with me. Um, I do have my past life course that I offer. It's really cheap and it, um, it's, you can go to my website, wonderfullightbody.com to see that, but I do, a sh I have a chakra meditation on there and I teach you how to enhance these abilities even stronger, uh, if you're interested in anything like that. Uh, and it allows you to kind of go through a course that I have rather than little videos like that. Um, it's really cheap. It's like 20 bucks or sometimes less. So um, check it out. And I hope that you have a visionary experience because I know I love it and I want you to love it. Okay, so remember, the first thing is darkness. Be in darkness using that mindful magazine. magazine. Um, using that mindful mask is going to help you enhance those abilities. Um, do chakra clearing meditations or, or uh, a chakra activation right before you go in. Lighting them up taking deep breaths, using crystals, and then practice memorizing. You can use a magazine to, to memorize details or use um, tarot cards or oracle cards, whatever works best for you. All right, I hope this helped you. I hope you liked it. It came to me this morning and I knew I had to share it. So again, this is Derek Jameson with wonderfullightbody.com and I would love for you to subscribe if you so choose. And I will try to post more now that I'm a little bit more settled in my new home. I will be posting more tips and tools like this. Thank you.